give him all the praise and give him all of the glory on this morning. The Lord has been good to us, been kind to us. We welcome you to the greater Mount of Calvary Missionary Baptist Church on this morning where the Lord is doing great and awesome things and he's truly worthy to be praised. We thank you for another day's journey. Amen. To God be the glory, to God be the honor for the many blessings he bestows upon us and keeps on blessing us over and over again. This time, we're going to ask that Minister Holmes will come and lead us in a word of prayer. Good morning, Calvary. It's a blessing to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Giving him thanks for this day, a day that he has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come once again, giving you thanks, O Lord, in your Son, Jesus Christ. Asking, Father, that you look down upon each and every one that is present. Look down upon those that are absent. Look down upon those, O Lord, that are traveling along the dangerous highway. And Heavenly Father, we ask the Lord to go around all of our sick and dead touch them one by one, name by name. And Heavenly Father, please go to the convalescent home, the hospital, foreign country, and the jailhouse. Heavenly Father, there's someone, Lord, standing in the need of prayer this morning. Someone, Lord, standing for a touch from you, Father. And Heavenly Father, we ask your Lord on your traveling. Come back by Calvary. Touch our pastor and first lady. Touch all of our deacon and deaconesses. Touch our ministers and ministers' wives. And Father, touch each brothers and sister one by one. Father, you know their needs and you know their desires. We ask the Lord just to open the minds and the heart of each and every one of us. And let us receive something today from the message that will sustain us to remain in this week. In your Son, Jesus' name we pray. And let every heart say amen. Amen. Amen.
top of my head to the sole of my feet. I belong to God. Good morning, Calvary. Again, we give honor to God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, to our pastor, Dr. Benson, First Lady, to all the ministers and everybody in their respective places. Hey, any wildcats in the house? <laughs> I just had to do that. I just had to do that. I just had to do that. But we're so happy for both teams. And we're going to pray for both of those, both those teams because we're going to keep them in our prayer. Okay. We want to say happy birthday to our fa Calvary family that's celebrating this month. It's October. Uh, anybody got their donation? They can see Deacon Clemens or Sister Crawford for your birthday donation. Okay. To our members who are celebrating this month in November, during November, please meet in the foyer on Sunday, October the 29th after morning service for your group pictures. Wednesday, no, that's already gone. We done did that part. October the 12th, 2023 at 7 p.m. We have a visit to the Rocky Hill Church of God in Christ for the annual fall revival. Pastor Vincent will give the opening prayer and the praise team is asked to participate in worship service. Ushers and deacons are asked to assist with, uh, ushers on post and our deacons are asked to assist with the ministry of giving. Sunday, October 15th, 2023, we'll be wearing the color purple for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Sunday, October 22nd, we'll be wearing the color pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And on Sunday, October 29th, we will have baby christening and baptism service will follow immediately after the morning worship services. Our candidates will please see either Deacon, myself, or Deacon Dean Willardine Jenkins. The Parkins security ministry is asking that we do not park on the grass on this side of the church. Do not park on the grass on this side of the church. Also, the parking spot next to pastor's parking spot should be kept empty at all times. 
and nobody park on the opposite side of pastor. So let's take heed of that because we're trying to keep our church looking beautiful. We want the grass to stay green. So please let's heed to those announcements. The Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated International High School Essay Comp uh, Contest. The contest awards three college scholarships, first scholarship, second, and a third one. The contest will close on October the 14th. Uh, it is open to all college-bound high school seniors who submit an essay application through a chapter of the fraternity. You have to do a type written double-spaced essay, mm -hmm. and it can be submitted by the Postal Service to the Omega Psi Phi Attention Bernard Perry, 3482 Duck Point Drive in Lake Park, Georgia. We have the information, so any of you aspiring seniors who are going to college, that's a good opportunity to show your worth. And you can receive some money to help you go to school. So we have this. We can make copies and give to anyone who ever would like to have one. Yes. Well, our announcements for today have been done. So here's our thought again for this month. When a flashlight goes dim or quits working, you don't throw it away, you change the batteries. When a person messes up and finds themselves in a dark place, do you cast them aside? Of course not. You help them change their batteries. Some need AA attention and affection. Some need AAA attention, affection, and acceptance. Some need C, which is compassion, and some need D, which is direction. And if they still don't seem to shine, simply sit with them and share your light. Thank you.
Deacons, deaconess, mothers, saints, and friends, we're just glad we back in the house of the Lord one more time and lift up the name of Jesus because he's truly worthy to be praised. I want to talk with you out of the book of Lamentations, the third chapter, verse 21. Lamentations, the third chapter, verse 21. Amen. Amen. Lamentations, the third chapter, verse 21. Just one verse of scripture. And it just simply said, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, have I hope. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. God, we just give you glory and we give you honor on this blessed Sunday morning. Lord, we thank you for all the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. Lord, we just thank you for how you keep on blessing us over and over again. Thank you how you keep on making a way out of no way. Lord, you keep on turning things around. God, you brought us all week long to this present time. You let our golden moment roll on, Father. And for that, we say thank you this morning. Thank you that we had a mind to come and worship. Thank you for the place to come and worship. Thank you for the place called Mount Calvary on this morning. God, we thank you for these that are here in person. We thank you for those that were gathered in virtual land. We thank you for the many blessings you continue to bestow upon us day after day here. After you, God, you've been good to us. God, we thank you for the purpose that we were born for. We thank you that we're able to give you praise and we're able to give you glory. We're able to give you honor. Now, Father, let not our coming be in vain. But give us the word this very hour that we stand in the need of right now, Father. Give us preaching and teaching power. Keep us near the cross. And we'll give your name the praise. We'll give your name the glory. We'll give your name the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. Lord, the Lord clap them hands all over the house. Amen. The Lord's been good to you. He deserved the praise. He deserved the glory. And he deserved the honor. God is an awesome God. And he's truly worthy to be praised. Amen. I want to talk with you from this subject on this morning for a few moments. Amen. From the subject, hope brought me back. Amen. Hope brought me back. Amen. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope, is what our text tell us on this morning. Another version of the Amplified Version says, amen, but this I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. And then it says, amen, we want to say to our young people, our young people that can go to, amen, children's church at this time, all our young people, amen, from, amen, elementary, middle school, and high school, you may exit to, amen, appropriate Amen. Places for children's church. Amen. But this I call to mind, therefore I have hope. Yeah. And then another version said, Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. And another version of my sentence said, I never forget the trouble, the utter lostness, the taste of ashes, the poison I had swallowed. I remember it all. Oh, how well I remember the 
this feeling of hitting the bottom. But there's one other thing I remember, and remembering I kept a grip on hope. I come by, amen, to remind somebody on this morning, before things I want to remind you on this morning, amen, about hope. Hope brought me back. I want to remind you, number one, amen, about hope brought me back. Number one, I want you to know that God will make a way for you. Yeah, I want to remind you this morning that, amen, God will make a way for you. For the text says, the writer says, I recall. In other words, I remember, I remember. You need to remember that God will make a way for you. I, I say will, not can, make a way. I say will, not can, make a way. What way do you need to be made on this morning? Yeah, if God took the time. To come through 42 generations to bring salvation to this world. He will make a way for you. If God took the time, amen, to take the water of the Red Sea and to divide it for the children of Israel to walk across on dry ground, God will make a way for you. If, he took, if God took the sun and had it to stand still in rotation while the children of Israel fight the enemy, Amen. For a whole day, God will make a way for you. Y'all, y'all ain't caught that yet. Yeah. In other words, if God, if God can say, let there be, and there was, he will make a way for you. If God can take a little oil and some meal for a widow woman and, and for her child to survive and to live off of and pay all of their debt. God can make a way for you. If God can take the children of Israel through 40 years in the wilderness and never have to buy a pair of clothes or any shoes that even wore out during the 40 years, y'all don't hear me, that let me know that God will make a way for you. Yeah, I don't know anybody here that had something for 40 years that didn't have to change it out. I don't care, amen, how good it was, amen. It had something happened to it in 40 years. But when, when God can take you through all of that, marching and going around in the wilderness, and you don't have to worry about buying not one thing of clothes, the same, amen, the same clothes you went in with, the same clothes you came out with, and they were as good as they was the first day as they was the last way. That lets me know that God will make a way for you. Remember that God will Make a way for you. Why? Because, amen, St. John reminded me that Jesus said, I am the way. Woo. The truth and the light. No man coming to the Father but by me. He's still the way. And then Genesis, amen, Brother Brown reminds us, amen, Genesis 18 and 14 reminds us, anything too hard for the Lord. At the appointed time, I will return unto thee. These according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Anyway, he lets them know, amen, let Abraham and Sarah know there ain't nothing too hard for God. God will make a way for you. It's a rhetorical question because the answer is obvious. No, no, nothing is too hard for our God. Amen. Because he says in Jeremiah 32 and 27, Behold, I am the Lord, the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? No, I come to tell you the answer is no. There's nothing too hard for God. Because God will make a way for you. And lastly, I want you to understand in Isaiah 43 and 19, Lady Venice said, Behold, I will do a new thing. Woo. Now it shall what spring forth. And shall ye not know it? I will even make a way. I will even make a way in the wilderness. I don't know about you, but anybody ever been in, in the wilderness and you you had to, amen, knock down some trees and knock down some bushes and knock down some stuff to get through where you needed to get through. But God said, I'll make a way for you in the wilderness. And I'll take you where there was no water. I'll give rivers in the desert. In the words, wherever the dry places that I'll make, the rivers come forth. I'll burst it forth for you. I'll do a new thing. Things you ain't never thought about. I'll do a new thing for you. God will make a way for you. You need to hear this this morning. God will make a way for you. Remember, he said, I recall that Amen. Let me tell you, I recall. Then I want you to recall number two. 
God is fighting your battles. I said, God is fighting you. But not only that, he will make a way for you. But the Lord will fight your battles. He not, amen. He not fighting your battle, but your, your battles. I didn't say he's not just fighting a battle, but he's fighting your battles. Yeah, we have more than one thing going on at one time in life. And can I get some real folks in here this morning? Can I get some real saying? Somebody say, Pastor, I ain't just got one battle. I got some battles. Amen. Amen. And somebody say, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Amen. You get the washing machine going, then the dryer want to cut up. Amen. Amen. You get this car fixed, then that car, the other car want to act up. You get one child straight, the other child want to act up. You, you go on the job. Amen. Everything going good. They paying you good, but you got to aggravate co-worker. Y'all don't hear me. You got some battles to fight. But I, come, I want you to know that God is fighting your battles. Yeah, because Jeremiah 45 and 2 says to us, I will go before thee. God said, I'll go before you. Before you get there, I'll, I'll, re, I'll already be there. He said, I'll make the crooked places straight. I'll break the pieces of the gates brass and cut down the son of the bars of the iron. In other words, I'll take the gates down for you. Where they wouldn't let you in, I'll take the gates down and take them down where you can walk in and be there because I'll make a way for you. I'll fight your battle. You ain't got to do nothing, but I'll fight your battles. And then he said, uh, I'll give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of the secret places. And then that I may know that I am the Lord. Woo! <laughs> I am the Lord, which also, and call on thy name, and, and I am the God of Israel. In other words, you might know, God said, I'm going to show you who I am, that you might know who I am, that I am the Lord, thy God. I'm the one that will fight your battles for you. Jimmy reminds me, I'm so glad that God will fight my battles, Brother Hill, because he said in 2 Chronicles 20 and 15, he said, don't worry about all them folks coming after you. He said, hearken you all Jews. Don't worry about, amen, the inhabitants of Jerusalem and those. And he told the king Jehoshaphat, said, thou, that said the Lord your God, be not afraid or be dismayed by this great mother too. I don't care who coming at you. Don't be afraid of them folks. Don't be afraid of them other folks. Don't be afraid of the haters. Don't be afraid of the street committee. But God said, don't worry about all them that are against you. Why? Because the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. <laughs> Somebody need to know it's the Lord this morning. Somebody need to understand it's the Lord. See, you're trying to fight the battle, but you need to understand it ain't your battle to fight. It's the Lord's battle. If you let the Lord do the fighting, everything will be all right. Because it says God will fight your battles. You need to remember this this morning. I call, amen, because hope brought you back. But you need to remember that God will fight your battle. Put your hands down. Put your dukes down. Put your gloves down. Take off, amen, your fighting shoes. And, and let them know this morning that God will fight fight your battles. Uh, he told him, amen, in the same, amen, word of God in Second Chronicles, he told him, you don't need to take no sword. You don't need to take no shield. You don't need to take nothing with you, but just take some praise with you, and you will win the war. You will win the battle. The battle is not yours, but it belongs to God. Stop fighting, folks, and let God do the fighting. And I come to tell you, you can't box with God, huh? I say you can't box with God, but if you let God do the fighting, he'll make everything all right. Why? Because, amen, he told them, Deacon Neal and Moses, he told Moses in Exodus 14, 13 and 14, he said, Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, but stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. All you need to do is just see the salvation. Just stand still. Sometimes you ain't got to say nothing. You ain't got to do nothing, but just stand still, you ain't got to say a word. You ain't got to swing not one hand. You ain't got to do nothing but just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And you, and you just stand still and wait on the Lord and see what God will do for you. And God said, I'll show you this day, Moses, for the, the Egyptian whom you see today, you shall never see again. Them same folks that, amen, try to block you. You won't have to worry about them no more. 
God got a way to move them out the way. God got a way to hush their minds. God got the way, amen, to shut them down. God got the way to put them down. God got the way to send them in another direction. God got the way of handling them. Don't you worry about it. Let God handle it. He'll do it. Them same folks that thought they were going to dig a ditch for you, you ain't got to worry about them folks no more. Them same folks that had, amen, a knife in your back, you ain't got to worry about them no more. Them same folks that talked out of both sides of their mouth, you ain't got to worry about them no more. Them the same folks that said they were your friend and you find out they were your enemy, you ain't got to worry about them no more because God said, I'll fight for you. He told Moses, the Lord shall fight for you. And you shall hold your peace. Just hold your peace. Let the Lord fight for you. Just hold your peace. Just let the Lord fight for you. Just hold your peace. He'll fight for you. Somebody need to know that God will fight for you. Yeah, point number two, hope, amen, brought me back. Amen, hope brought me back. But I come to tell you that God will make a way for you. And God is fighting your battles. Let me get on out of here this morning. Point number three, uh, Deacon Sassinator, is that prayer is the best medicine. I said prayer is the best medicine. And God is the best doctor. Y'all don't hear me this morning. I said prayer is the best medicine. And God is the best doctor. I know that prayer changes things. And I know that prayer can change you. I know the songs that I know, I know, I know what prayer can do. Can I get a witness this morning? Anybody got that testimony this morning? That you can say, I know, I know whew, what prayer can do. I'm, a re I'm here this morning because I know what I know, I know what prayer whew, can do. Prayer, I come to tell you this morning, prayer is always in order. I say prayer is always in order. Don't let them tell you you can't pray. <laughs> Honey, you can always pray. I don't care where you're at, you can always say a word of prayer. Amen, you can be driving down the road and say a word of prayer. You can be, amen, on your job and sitting at your desk and say a word of prayer. Amen, you can be in the midst of a storm in your life and say a word of prayer. Prayer is always in order. Prayer is the best medicine. Mm, prayer is. I stopped by to remind somebody this morning to take a dose of prayer. And you'll be all right in the morning. Woo! I say take a dose of prayer. And you'll be all right in the morning. Because God will answer prayer. That's why a sister wears Thessalonians. First Thessalonians 5 and 17 say pray without ceasing. It means to have your mind always concentrating on the things of God, to be in constant communication with the Lord so that every moment that you have available with him is fruitful and prosperous. Then he reminds us, uh, Sister Bergman, in Second Chronicles, the 7th chapter, in the 14th verse, prayer is the best medicine. He said, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, Somebody know what I'm talking about. And pray. And seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways. Then he said, then will I hear. That's the medicine. Woo. Then will I hear from heaven. And I will heal the land. Prayer is the best medicine. Why? Because I know that prayer will change things. I feel like preaching this morning. Oh, because I know what prayer can do. I stopped by to remind somebody on this morning that hope brought me back. Because, amen, prayer is the best medicine. Jesus prayed, and when Jesus prayed, miracles happened. Deacon Cook, I said, when Jesus prayed, miracles happen. If you don't believe me, you need to stop by Lazarus' house on this morning and ask, amen, Lazarus, because he could tell you that he prayed, that they, amen, to the open of my grave and something begin to happen.
Yeah, and Acts, amen, them 5,000 plus folks that were standing out there in the plain of the land, and amen, that were hungry. Jesus took a, f a few fish and a few loaves of bread, and, and the Bible said, and he prayed. Y'all ain't caught that yet. I come to tell you, when Jesus prayed, miracles happened, honey. Ask the woman with the issue of blood that said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. When Jesus prayed, things begin to happen. You ought to go to the wedding in Canaan land. Amen. Well, amen. Jesus, amen, took the water and turned it to wine. But before he did that, he prayed. And I come to tell you and ask the blind man that couldn't see. But then Jesus prayed. And then he saw his, amen, sight. And if you don't get the chance to ask any of them folks this morning, I come by to tell you, just ask me. I know what the Lord can do. I know what the Lord can do. I'm a living witness. If you ask me, I know that prayer will change things. I'm a living testimony. I know what prayer can do. Can I get a witness on this morning? That say I'm a living testimony. That I know what prayer can do. Hope brought me back. Somebody say, I'm standing today because of prayer. Woo. I'm living today because of prayer. I'm surviving today because of prayer. I am who I am because of prayer. I made it because of prayer. I survived because of prayer. Yes, sir. I know what prayer can do. Good God Almighty. Let me get out of here. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Point number four. I'm going to leave y'all alone. Number one, God will make a way for you. Number two, God will fight your battles. Number three, prayer is the best medicine. And number four, as I go to a close, trust God's timing. I say trust God's timing. Not your time, but God's time. Trust him when you can't trace him. I say, trust him when you can't trace him. Someone said, well, preacher, what you're talking about, sometimes you go through things, you say, where is the Lord at? In all of this, Lord, I ain't heard from you. I don't know which way to turn. I don't know which way to go, but that's when you got to trust him when you can't trace him. Y'all don't hear me. We always say, well, he's an on-time God. Yeah, I thought y'all knew that one, man. Yeah, and I'm coming to tell you this morning, that's just more than a church saying or more than a, a church slogan, but, but he is an on-time God. Yes, he is. Can I get a witness this morning that somebody know that he's an on-time God? Yes, he is. I can't do nothing without him, but I can trust God in every situation. That's why I stopped by Proverbs, the third chapter this morning, and it told me to trust in the Lord with all my heart. Sometimes that's all you got left is the trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Somebody say how do you the amen acknowledge God right now and then you got to trust him and then you got to acknowledge him how do I acknowledge him I say father I stretch my hand to thee no other help I know if thou withdraw thyself from me oh whether shall I go how do you acknowledge him now Lord now Lord how do you acknowledge him Lord have have mercy on my soul. How do you acknowledge him? Jesus, I need you right now. I come to tell you, if you trust him and you acknowledge him, he'll come and see about you. He'll come to your rescue. He'll show up at the right time. The old church, the old church used to sing a song. That I'm going to trust in the Lord until I die. Y'all remember that one? I'm going to trust in him 
until I die. But Isaiah told me, and Isaiah 40 and 31, he said, but they that wait on the Lord, that he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And then Galatians, let me know, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, in God's timing, in God's timing, in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. I don't know about you, but I feel a due season coming. I feel a due season coming. My season is my season. It's my time. Is anybody here this morning can say, it's my season. It's my time. I'm about to reap. I'm about to get what belongs to me. Whatever God got for me, I'm going to get my blessing. And then Job said, if a man die, shall he live again? But all my appointed time, my appointed time, I'm going to wait till my change come. Is there anybody here on this morning waiting on a change? Anybody here uh, waiting on God to move? Uh, anybody here uh, waiting on God to bless? Uh, anybody here uh, waiting on God to turn it around? Uh, anybody here uh, waiting on God to shake your ground? Uh, anybody here uh, waiting on God to move in your direction? Uh, anybody here uh, waiting on God to open up a door? Uh, anybody here uh, waiting on God to heal you? Uh, Anybody here uh, waiting on God to deliver you? Uh, anybody here uh, waiting on God to bring you out? Uh, anybody here uh, waiting on a financial blessing? Uh, anybody here uh, waiting on a way with child? Uh, anybody here uh, need a blessing on their job? Uh, anybody here uh, need a blessing in their marriage? Uh, need a blessing in their home? Uh, need a blessing in their life? Uh, I stop by to remind you uh, that hope, uh, hope, uh, brought me back hope brought me back I had hope and it brought me back I waited on the Lord with all the hope I had and it brought me back and if hope brought me back it'll bring you back yeah 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 hope will bring you back why? Because uh, the text says uh, in the next verses, uh, it says that every new morning, uh, that great is thy faithfulness. Uh, it is of the Lord mercy uh, that we are not consumed. Uh, but the Lord had mercy. Uh, the Lord had forgiveness. Uh, the Lord had grace. Uh, the Lord had compassion uh, on us. Uh, and it fell not. Uh, but every morning, uh, God gives us uh, a new day uh, of mercy. Uh, and you ought to clap your hands. Hand. You ought to give him praise uh, for new mercy every day. Uh, and he said, the Lord is uh, my portion. Uh, the Lord is good to me. Uh, the Lord is good to me. Uh, has he been good to you? Uh, for them that seek at him, uh, it's a good thing. Uh, Deacon Daniels, uh, he says, it's a good thing uh, that a man uh, should both hope uh, and wait on the Lord uh, for salvation. Uh, I come to tell you uh, that hope uh, brought me back. Uh, I'm closing. Uh, on this morning, uh, for some reason, uh, for some reason, uh, I remember, uh, and you remember, uh, watching the days uh, of our lives uh, on television uh, around 12.30. Uh, Y'all remember them stories, uh, days of our lives uh, around 12.30, uh, 12.30 uh, in the afternoon, uh, and they had a favorite couple uh, on the show. Uh, it was Bo, uh, Bo Bradley uh, and Hope Williams. Uh, Y'all remember Bo Bradley uh, and Hope Williams. Uh, and I remember an episode uh, when Bo was severely injured uh, and ended up in a coma. Uh, and Bo laid in the hospital. Uh, and Hope uh, sat by his bed uh, praying uh, and telling him uh, how she couldn't live without him uh, and how she couldn't go through this. Uh, she had been in the past uh, with him by his side. Uh, and Hope uh, spoke about the many things uh, that they made it through together with. And surprisingly, Bo could hear her. He was in a coma, but Bo could still hear Hope talking about the good old days. And he began to recount in his mind 
the stories uh, that Hope had mentioned uh, and miraculously uh, a miracle happened uh, that Bo uh, woke up uh, before the end uh, of the show. Uh, he woke up uh, before it went off. Uh, it shot everybody uh, because the doctor said uh, that Bo wouldn't make it. Uh, everybody uh, began to celebrate uh, Bo. Uh, Ask one question, uh, what brought you back? Uh, what made you come out uh, of a coma? Uh, what made you come out of uh, uh, what you was in? Uh, and Bo said uh, that he wanted to give up uh, while he was in a coma. Uh, he wanted to throw in the towel, uh, but he couldn't. Uh, he couldn't. Uh, why? Uh, because hope uh, brought him back. Uh, Y'all ain't caught it yet. Uh, because hope uh, wouldn't let him go. Uh, Hope uh, wouldn't give up on him. Uh, hope brought him back. Uh, and I stopped by to tell you uh, on this morning uh, that when I thought about uh, giving up, uh, hope brought me back. Uh, I ain't talking about hope uh, in the story, uh, but I'm talking about the hope uh, of glory. Uh, I'm talking about the hope uh, that went down, uh, went down. Uh, in a bar grave. I'm talking about the hope that hung on a cross and he died for your sins. I'm talking about a hope but they whipped him all night long and they never said a mumbling word. I'm talking about a hope that went in the grave and stayed there all Friday night. That hope stayed there all Saturday night. That hope got up early early Sunday morning with all power all power in his hand all power in his hand that hope is still alive that hope is still able that hope still got power that hope will save you that hope will deliver you that hope will turn it around that hope uh, will make a way for you. Uh, that hope uh, will fight for you. Uh, that hope uh, will let prayer work for you. Uh, that hope uh, that I serve, uh, he's all right. Uh, he's all right. Uh, he's all right. Uh, he's all right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, somebody, somebody, somebody need to know that hope, hope brought me back, hope brought me back, I was giving up, I was throwing in the towel, but I looked like David, David said, my steps had well not slipped, I was giving up, but I got, and I thought about the goodness of the Lord. Has anybody ever thought about the goodness of the Lord? Thought about the goodness of the Lord. What's the goodness of the Lord? He woke me up this morning. That's good enough. He started me on my way. That's good enough. He put clothes on my back. That's good enough. He put a roof over my head. That's good enough. He helped me to raise my children. That's good enough. He gave me a job. That's good enough. He put food on the table. That's good enough. He keeps on making a way for me. That's good enough. When I thought about the goodness of the Lord, I thought about how good God had been to me. Have you ever thought about how good God has been to you? Yeah! Yeah! I was 
like Jeremiah said, I wasn't going to say nothing. 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 But I thought about the goodness of the Lord. I thought about where the Lord brought me from. I thought about when I was in the valley, he reached way down and picked me up. I thought about my weeping may endure for a night, but John, 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 John. Ain't it good? Ain't it good? Ain't it good? I'm trying to stop y'all, but ain't it good? Ain't it good? Doors of the church are open. Would that be one? Don't have a church on. That want to make my carry your church on. Would that be one that's not saved? That want to be saved? We open the doors of the church for you. They're open for you. Come on in. Hope brought me back. Hope brought me back. Hope brought me back. Woo! Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he, 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 won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Woo! Hey! Glory to God. Ready one. Don't have a church on. They want to make my family your church on. This your day. This your island. This your seat. Come be a part of the greater Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. This is your day. This is your time. You're not saved. You don't know the Lord, know the part of your sin. And you're watching it virtually and say simply, say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive for all my sins and my transgression. Lord, save me. I want to live for you. I want to be right. I want to be your child. I want to walk in your kingdom. I receive you into my heart. Lord, save me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. But everyone that's here this morning, you will stand open. Come by letter. Come with the Christian experience. Come as a candidate for baptism. This your day. This your time. This your season for you to come and be a part of the Greater Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. Would it be one, two, or three? This your time. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Hope brought me back. Is there any first time visitors this morning? Want to? Recognize any first time visitors, will you please stand? Will you visit this for the first time? Will you please stand? God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 Don't want to remember that on this Thursday night, amen, we're supposed to go to Rocky Hill, amen, Church of God in Christ on Thursday night at 7 o'clock p.m. So we won't have our Wednesday night live service online. We're going to be in person at Rocky Hill. All right? Amen. Now, we had a wonderful crowd on last Wednesday. Didn't we have a wonderful crowd last Wednesday at our Wintersville? Amen. We want that same crowd and some more. Amen. If you don't know if you know how to get to Rocky Hill, see me, text me, and I'll get you the direct address and get you the directions. Amen. To get to Rocky Hill right there in this big city of Hayhara. Amen. The country part of Hayhara. Minnaola, Georgia, as they call it. Amen. Come on, let's go. Amen. And support Rocky Hill. Amen. Sister. Amen. Uh, Christy Summers is here this morning. Amen. She she a member of Mount Carey, but she associated with Rocky Hill. Amen. 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 She got two memberships. <laughs> Amen. But, but y'all come on, let's go and support Rocky Hill. They come all year long and do things with us and with us. So let's do let's do the right thing. Isn't that right? Amen. Let's show up. Amen. Let's show up now. If we can show up for the Wintersville tailgate. Let's show up for Rocky Hill on this week, Thursday night at 7 o'clock p.m. By chance, if you have not, if you have not, amen, ordered your t-shirts, the new Mount Calvary t-shirts, 
your polo t-shirt. If you're not ordered those t-shirts, hey man, please go in the fellowship hall and someone will meet you back there on the day and you can place your order. If you're not paid for all your shirts, please do so this morning because we won't order any shirts that have not been paid for in full. Amen. I want to make sure we have everything in order for we we got to worry about this, that, other. We want to make sure everything we place order, that everything is in order. We're ready to go. So if you want, amen, one of my cavalry shirt, please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, come on and place your order. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Heaven keep you is our prayer. And we're getting ready to go. Amen. We give God the praise, give God the glory, give God the honor. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. God bless you. Amen. God bless all of you on this morning. Let's thank God for our youth choir this morning. And the youth praise team this morning. Give them a hand clap of praise. God bless you. Heaven keep you is our prayer. Amen. Sister Laura, will you help me out for just one second? Amen. 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 May God be the glory. If I couldn't say a word, I would just, I just wave my hand. Amen. And I want to share with the Vikings, Sister Laura, will you be so kind to pull up worship, Ezekiel 37 and 27. I want to leave y'all with a word from the Lord, from Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. The Wildcat score in the 27th verse. It says, My tabernacle, my dwelling place, also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Amen. Even the Vikings shall be his people, Amen. and they can dwell in his place. Remember that. If you don't remember anything, remember Ezekiel 20, 37 and 27. That the Lord will be with you. Is there any wildcats in the house this morning? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Look at Dick Clear. <laughs> hey, he's, he's a fade in cat. <laughs> hey, we'll take it. We'll take it. We y'all stand all over the house. I ain't gonna mess with y'all this morning. I, I ain't gonna do y'all like I used to do. I I give y'all a break this time. This time. Amen. <laughs> God. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for all the things you've done and the things that you continue to do. But awesome God, you are. We give you all the praise and glory. God, continue to look on those that are sick, those that are shedding, those that stand in need of special prayer. You know all about that situation and their circumstances. Heal, set free, and deliver right now, Father God. Look on the bereaved family and their hour lost. Be with them and comfort them, oh, Father God. Bless all of those that are giving up their tithes and offering on the day. Bless it back to them, God. Return it back to them 100 fold, oh, Father God. And bless those that had the desire to give, God, that it may happen on the next time. So that all of the building of your kingdom, that you will get the praise, that you will get the glory, and that you get the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we give your name the praise, give your name the glory, and give your name the honor. In Jesus' name. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest root on the Bible, that's henceforth now and forever. And all God people say, Amen. Amen. I do want to meet with all the leaders of Sister Sister Ministry, all the leaders of Sister Sister Ministry and the men ministry. Briefly, Amen. Over here. Amen. Sister Sister Ministry and the leaders of the men ministry. <laughs>